we see quantum behavior begin to show up in our in my experiments in atomic physics experiments around a hundred millionths of a degree above absolute zero. So that's really cold. Other areas of physics, they see quantum behavior at higher temperatures. So for example, superconductors, so uh, types of metals where below a certain temperature, electricity flows without resistance. They see quantum behavior only, you know, maybe at 100 degrees below zero or so. And this is a puzzle. There are materials that are superconducting at very high temperatures that nobody really knows why they do that. So what I'm trying to do in my experiments, with it, which are atomic physics experiments with gases, is to come up with analogies to these superconductors, to come up with analogous experiments to this quantum behavior in superconductors that shows maybe it will give us some insight as to why superconduct superconductors behave the way they do. But superconducting experiments are typically much more complicated. There are many more variables to be accounted for. And in some very real ways, the experiments are dirtier. It's, there, there's more impurities in the experiment. So while I have to go colder to do these experiments, the experiments are cleaner. That has very far-reaching applications in terms of possibly shedding insight on how these superconductors work and how to make superconductors a more practically applicable technology. And if you can you know, imagine, for example, a power grid that flowed without resistance, you know, the, co the energy costs involved would be much, much less than what we have right now. And that's why people are so excited about figuring out how quantum behavior in solids or in gases actually works. But that's on a very long time scale.